everyone this is Josh Albo in the video today I'm going to be going over my trade after dust on September 25th 2019 it was a five-day swing trade I ended up um, not being profitable as well and I'm going to give you the technical analysis that I did at the time it was a bad trade like it wasn't uh, this is my fourth one and I was six days or eight days into whatever this is eight days into learning about the entire subject I didn't I didn't uh, want to take the time to do any not from a lack of discipline standpoint and not wanting to take the time to do paper trading but I was comfortable with the risk of the dollar amounts I was taking and I believe that risking real dollars would be more valuable in the long run again this is just my perspective by all means, I would do the simulated backdated trading that Zip Trader Charlie talks about on the Zip Trader YouTube channel, where you can go back, look at previous charts, like rewind the charts for different trades that you see, um, and then before you know what they will do, take uh, paper trades on those so that you can get an idea of what would happen and learn from the experience there. So then, but I felt like, like from an execution standpoint, same way I've done with my businesses, I wanted to like not be it's like reading a book versus doing what you read about in the book if i read a book a week but it i don't do any of the things in the books that knowledge is unapplied so it's almost worthless like it, it, it's not providing any value or productivity or anything from an economical or dollar standpoint but even if i watch five youtube videos if i'm willing to lose fifty dollars a hundred dollars whatever i set my my maximum risk at and I know what tools I need in place to put a stop loss in place, etc. Then I would much rather execute and learn from the um, learn from the failure than being afraid to fail because of a couple dollars. I'm willing to pay for that speed to speed up the failure process to get towards the end goal or success. Let's call it sooner. So on September 25th, 2019, I bought Facebook and let's clear all the drawings out real quick. So we can get a uh, full idea. What did I say it was? The 25th September. So 920. It'll be about in here. 920. 925. And I bought it at $180.7 a share. 25. 180.8. So about right here. It looks like. Right in here. And the problem with this trade, so this is the 180 day chart. If we zoom back out, right on the 25th, this is completely one. This, this is just a shit trade. I bought it because of the price point. Now, obviously, if you look at it now, market's closed for the day. If you look at it now, it hit 200, it looks like today or within the past, yeah, today, yesterday. Um, and I like Facebook as a long term value play. But from a swing trading position, this was an absolutely awful trade. So what do we see about on the 25th that was not good about this? Okay, I guess a good thing would be it's oversold on the RSI. It's below the 30, so that's not bad. Um, however, it's pretty. it's got very bad price strength on the 180-day SMA line. And it, there's, there's zero confirmation in here. It's completely, if anything, it's got price action towards a short position. Going against, this is the um, nine day SMA. This is the Bollinger Bands SMA, and then these are the standard deviations for the bands, which I wasn't even using bands at this time, I don't believe. So I guess, okay, now that I actually have the bands in place, um, seeing that it was riding along the bottom of the Bollinger Band on, on the lower side and it was oversold, I guess that would be a good indication. However, it's still, what I, you have to wait for the confirmation. This is when the confirmation add addition like really 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 stuck in my head because I just wasn't waiting like I wasn't being patient enough um, which is lack of discipline could have been lack of knowledge but just clearly lack of discipline so the good things about this trade were oversold on the RSI it was still above the 180 day SMA line which is good which is good for what you call uh, and it was at the bottom of the bullet the lower Bollinger Band which would have been a good sign. So we had three good signs. However, there was zero confirmation on the nine day SMA. And that's like the number one thing I look for now um, after RSI or between the two. Um, probably value 
the confirmation the most, and then the RSI oversold, like getting in at a good deal below 50, let's say, and then the long-term pattern. Because I've still made good trades that were below the 180-day SMA, but that had confirmed. So that would be my take on why Facebook was a bad trade. My take profit was going to be at 190. So I was this is back when I was I was doing um I was willing to risk 50 because I dropped down from the 20, 200 to uh, 100. I was willing to risk 50 dollars on a stop loss from that standpoint. So I was willing to that doesn't even look like 50. That looks like three dollars. So I wasn't even willing to risk 50 on that. I was oh 60 yeah same thing. And then I was willing uh, I still wanted a is it two hundred dollars? That's a weird. I don't know. Oh, I think I cut the stop loss. That's what I did. That's why the stop loss is weird. So on this one, I probably set the stop loss for a hundred and the take profit for two hundred. At twenty shares, ten dollars per share profit, two hundred dollar profit at the take, and I ended up cutting this uh, this quick because I realized probably watched another video of Charlie's or. Um, Jesus, I can't think of the guy's name in Arizona. Ricky, duh, Jesus. Probably watched one of their videos and was like, this is an awful trade, time to get out of the trade and cut my losses before I even hit that 100. So luckily I got out without having to go all the way down to 100. Um, at the 180 mark, what's the lowest it got in town? 174. So it definitely would have broken the um, $5. I would have been down 100 about here or even here would have been better on the confirmation here uh, it's still at the, about the midway on the RSI but then this would have been a nice little spread let's see what this looks like six percent 11 bucks this year so that would have been 100 bucks right there same thing over here but the challenge with this is that it's all mostly above the 50 50 uh, on the RSI and we don't like to see that for buying because we like to buy good deals. What the heck? Let me zoom out. So that was my fourth trade of Facebook. I lost $60. Um, to total my first four trades, I was looking at negative 70. And the calculations, the reason I was willing to do this, because if you look at my next trade, obviously I went back up. So if we sum this with this. Then I, I go back up on my very next trade, so I'm, I'm good. I'm Gucci, I'm all set. But the risk that I was willing to do, for a 2-to-1 risk, if I'm willing to lose one but gain two of my trades, I only have to be right 33% of the time to still be profitable. Not even break even, but that's like, like profitable. So if I'm right 33 out of 100 trades at the 2-for-1 ratio, then I'm set. Right now, uh, within my first month, let's call it, let's call it a month and a week, because I don't really... IP was like my first trade technically. So let's call it a, a month and a half for my very first trade. I'm up about 5%, 5.5%, $554. My trade ratio percent winnings is 68%. And my average trade profit or loss is $21 per trade. But there was a bunch in here that this was a good learning period from here to... Even the two Bank of America and Chase, which were just quick little easy money grabs that I happened to see and get out of those running the swing trades, which are just going to be long-term investments that happen to have a quick profit. So I was like, sure, why not? But so far, can't complain, about 500 bucks and 68% win percentage. So I could literally do half as well as I'm doing right now at a 33%, 34, and still be profitable. So the biggest things I've learned so far, one, wait for the confirmation on the uh, nine-day SMA, the blue SMA line, and patience. I oversold again today, too, a nice, like, quick morning profit. This was easy this morning, but this number, this 30.6, my original was going to be 30.9, which makes this 193, and then it's already at 31.2 which makes that 223 so i lost out about 60 last profit there and i would have broke the 60 percent mark um but 0.60 it's all a learning game my, my discipline's slowly getting better
Oh no, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to do this. Edit, undo. Edit, undo. 30.60. There's my take. If you got value out of this video, if you're getting value out of these videos of me breaking down the technical analysis, what I've learned so far, this is purely so that you don't make the same mistakes I do. Um, so I hope at least you're getting some type of value out of watching these. Um, if you are liking them, would love and appreciate a like, comment, subscribe type thing because that helps the, the YouTube algorithm. I don't care about the Instagram algorithm for this. Helps the YouTube algorithm and it makes it worth me making these videos. If they're not helpful, like just call me out and say, listen, this video is shit because dot, dot, dot. Like I'm 100% I'm about making the video. Like I don't get paid to make these YouTube videos. So if they're not be like giving you value, if they're, they're wasting too much of your time, I guess, let me know. And then, but you, I still need to know what you would want to rather see, whether I'm talking too much, whether I'm not talking enough, if I'm going too deep, if I'm not going deep enough, whatever you want to see, the point of this channel is for you to see it from my lessons and experience. Thanks for watching. I'll see everyone in the next video.